Motivation with Amazon Music. You're still in bed? Didn't you go running? Oh, I overslept. I'll go tomorrow. I'm getting in the shower. Alexa, set an alarm for 5 a.m. tomorrow to Hard Rock Music. <laughs> okay, I'm up. The right song exactly when you need it. Amazon Music, the simplest way to listen to the music you love. New customers start your 30-day free trial at AmazonMusic.com. Renews automatically cancel anytime. Love Talk Radio. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are you constantly searching for the truth? For the things that are not supposed to exist? Well, sit back and relax. Your journey is about to begin as we take you into the fog. Now, here's your host, Fair and Maria. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Into the Fire. So glad that uh, you're here tonight. We've got a wonderful guest with us tonight, uh, Mr. Eric Cooper. We're going to have a great discussion, and Maria and I are really looking forward to it. And Hello, Maria. How are you doing? I am sitting on my back porch, and it is absolutely beautiful, and I'm enjoying the peace and quiet. Yes, and I am so envious of you. I can't stand it because I'm stuck in my little office where I spend most of my time at. <laughs> Time to move that office outdoors. It's perfect weather for it tonight. No air conditioner and the wind is up. If I had talked to you earlier, I would have been on the the pool deck, but no, not now. (laughs) Yep, too late. (laughs) A little bit too late. Uh, Well, uh, we're so excited to have Eric tonight, and uh, uh, Eric is such a uh, special uh, person. His team is... uh, Outstanding, and we are uh, very like-minded, I think, in a lot of ways, uh, because uh, we also uh, love to do the uh, abduction, uh, abductions, UFOs, strange creatures, um, and uh, ghosts, and we do cleansings, and we do all that stuff. And uh, Eric does it also, and we're going to have quite a lot of shows, so I'm going to let Maria go ahead and... Uh, Introduce uh, Eric and give a little bit of background about him. Well, as I spoke with Eric earlier, um, Eric Cooper has such a long bio that it would take me forever to go through every bit of it. (laughs) Um, But I want everybody to know that he has uh, a show called S4, which airs every Saturday at midnight, which that is... um, Oh, is it? It's, not, it's Pacific time, not Mountain time. It's Pacific time. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct. Yes. Okay. okay. And uh, it covers all aspects of UFOs and abductions, paranormal in general, and any other topic involving all of those fields. Um, he is also a forest moon paranormal, and they deal with abductions and UFO and ghosts. And also the spirit removal, as you and I do there. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, had, yes. we've done that quite often. So nice. I'm very excited. Eric has an extensive, ex- very extensive, very interesting military career. <laughs> so I'm kind of excited for you to bring him on so we can talk all about this. Well, let's, let's wait no longer. We're going to drum roll, please. <laughs> We're bringing on... Uh... Eric Cooper now, and uh, Eric, welcome to uh, Into the Fire, and uh, we're so happy to have you here. How are you doing tonight? Oh, I'm uh, I'm like uh, Maria. I'm sitting outside, uh, and the, well, the clouds are moving in, uh, so we're supposed to get rain, but it's supposed to be 90 on Saturday. <laughs> just, uh, just we're wow. rubbing we're in. The, we're we're up in the mountains. We're literally up in the mountains of concrete, Washington. So, uh, yeah, we're about the 500 where uh, yeah, five hundred. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm yeah, five hundred level, whatever. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful area. My my sister lives out there. She's in Bend, Oregon, and she also hangs uh, uh, in Arizona. And uh, I think she's probably heading back that way from Arizona now. That uh, the 
baseball season's about ready to start and everything else. So she does spring break down there. So, but anyway, uh, we are just, I have to thank you, first of all, for your military service. Uh, we sure certainly appreciate it. I know you've done uh, several different tours, and uh, we just cannot thank you enough for uh, that service, sir. Oh, you know, and like like I always tell everyone, I, I wouldn't change a thing. There's, there's, you know, I'm, no, I, I don't like saying I enjoyed it, but I did because I took care of soldiers. That's that was my job, um, as a staff sergeant. Well, and, well you were actually uh, so a medic, I was a combat. Uh, say again. You were actually a medic, weren't you? Were you yeah, medic I was a combat also? medic and 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 a truck mechanic. I had both MOSs. I, I had a break. I had about a seven month seven month break in service. I was a combat medic for four and a half years and a truck mechanic uh, for the other from ninety five to two thousand ten. Uh, but I was also a, a medic for all those units as well because many units in the army don't have medics attached to them. So once they found out, oh, you were uh, you're you're a secondary MOS combat medic, well you you're going to be our medic as well. So I wound up doing both jobs as well as uh, I was a safety NCO. So I was. I'm also OSHA inspection certified, which comes in handy with paranormal because you walk into uh, someone's home, the first thing you look for is the mundane before you look for the paranormal. So oh, if their exactly. cabinets, if the cabinet doors are moving or something like that, you look for heater vents that are, might be nearby or some kind of a draft. Uh, the hearing knocks, you look at water pipes, you look at the age of the house, see if the uh, house is shifting or you know things things of that nature. That's fantastic. Now. Uh, I know uh, in the military, and uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, with your bio and everything else, and I know that you've had some uh, odd experiences with the uh, paranormal throughout your life, and I also know that you've had some uh, interesting experiences while in the military uh, with uh, abductions and uh, UFO sightings. You want to go into that a little bit, yes, Liz? So, yeah, my first two actual UFO sightings were both in Germany. Uh, one was in Illesheim going by Kitzigan. It was a very giant that was over the city. Uh, I watched it for about five minutes, and just like you turn out a light, it blinked off. It wasn't a spotlight. I could see the full moon on the other side of the Audubon, and I could see the orange orb, <laughs> you know. It wasn't the moon. It wasn't. It was the UFO. The uh, other one was about a year later uh, in Bad Vinsheim, and it looked like a star. It was blinking. Um, I don't know why, but I got a flashlight and flashed this flashlight at it, and it shot down to about figure airline height Mm -hmm. and hovered there for a minute and then shot back up to its original position. Uh, the third one was actually in Iraq going over Syria. <laughs> and, you know, by definition, a UFO was un- unidentified. It wasn't our craft, uh, that, as was confirmed by other witnesses that were with me, that were both, uh, one was an, uh, an aircraft mechanic, the other was an aircraft crew chief. And we were all watching it, and it was triangular-shaped. It was not ours. Uh, could it have been an experimental craft? It could have been. It wasn't a drone. We know that. Um, And going by the energy of of Syria alone, uh, just, you know, the history of it, uh, it it was was definitely unique. It had no noise. Mm. It hovered. It moved oddly. So, yeah, that was my third UFO. And uh, those are my three UFO experiences. Then I have two different reptilian experiences. One was on Fort Lewis in about, 97. The other one was uh, while I was still in the Army in, in Atlanta, Georgia in, uh, oh, God, 99, 2000, roughly. And they were cloaked. They were not visible. They didn't show themselves. But uh, if you're familiar with reptilians, they have this awful stench. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the energy, the energy you just can't, it's uh, indescribable. Um, I knew who they were. They knew who I was. They know who I am. Um, and we have an, uh, we have an agreement where I'm at now because we live in the mountains around me. And uh, they don't mess with me. I don't mess with them. Uh, 
that could change at any time. Obviously, I I despise him. It depends Welcome on to the, the club. race you're talking about, of course. <laughs> Say again. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the club. I don't think I've ever met a guy. <laughs> you said the depending on the race. I just hear the word reptilian, and I'm like going, "Oh my gosh!" You know, uh, right. I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, Trust them and everything else. I've heard a lot of people talk about their experiences with Reptilian, and, and some of them say that they were just wonderful people. And I'm like, going, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, so, I, so I've Eric. got, so I've got a, uh, real quick, I've got a theory about that because you know I, I get I get attacked occasionally mm-hmm. by some people that claim to be abductees, and uh, and they they tell me, well, how can you say uh, aliens are evil? I've had nothing but wonderful experiences. Well, those people I call contactees. Contactees mm-hmm. are the ones that have wonderful experiences. They get messages. They have, you know, this bro- this alien brotherhood uh, experience. Those aren't abductees. Those are contactees. And it goes back to the 30s and 40s, the contactee movement does. And it still goes mm-hmm. on today. Uh, the abductees are the ones that, uh, and that goes back to the 13th century, it's documented as far as the abductions go. Um mm-hmm. But with abductions, these are the people that, you know, they get taken against their will. They have medical experiments, uh, sometimes pregnancies. They have uh, experiments done on them, scientific studies done on them, sometimes social experiments done on them, and they don't enjoy it. These are the ones that stay quiet, and they they won't come out because of fear of ridicule. Uh, Maybe, maybe if there's some kind of disclosure, we'll we'll be inundated with, you know, abductees that want the help. Um, now, my other side of that is the Stockholm Syndrome. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, for the ones that aren't familiar with Stockholm Syndrome, this is the ones where, and it's common with, uh, you know, terrorists that, that ab- abduct people and hold them for ransom, whatever. And in those cases, the abductee is, they, they kind of become bonded with their captor, and they sympathize with them or empathize with them. And that yes. might be what's happening with some of these uh, contactees. They're actually <laughs> switch over to Stockholm syndrome, for lack of a better way to describe it. And yeah. I, I think that's a possibility with some of them. Uh, and I kind of agree with you with that. But, you know, it's uh, I've always uh, mentioned about uh, the abductees, and uh, you always uh, can tell the what I consider to be the true abductees. And I agree 100% with mm-hmm. the contactees. But abductees go through a life-altering thing that takes emotional toll on them that is mm-hmm. unknown. It is like if you can imagine, uh, let's talk about a rape scenario where uh, you are taken against your will, uh, forcibly have uh, taken out of your home, uh, have miracle, uh, medical experiences done on you and plot back in your house and you're looking at your body going, what in the heck has happened to me? And uh, right. to- totally different than the uh, uh, the con- contact the, uh, uh, syndrome. And I, I know that you deal with, uh, with both of them. May, may I ask you a question? Uh, are you an abductee or experiencer yourself? No. I've never nope. been taken, uh, no. <laughs> I, I know people personally that have been, and that's actually what got me into this field. Mm-hmm. And that was in about 94. So I've been in the, the UFO abduction field for a little over 20 years. Um, so that's and, when you, got, you met a lady that was with the Gray Hybrid Program? Yeah. And uh, I, I, knew, I, I knew her personally. We woke up. We were in a hotel. Uh, she had a triangular pattern of puncture marks on her abdomen. Uh, we had no idea what that was. Uh, it, it was everything. To, so I, to me, everything happens for a reason. And that particular morning, we turned on this TV, and it was a talk show. And they happened to have a panel of alien abduction uh, on mm-hmm. the show. And these women were explaining their experiences on this. I can't remember if it was Ricky Laker. It, it, it was a talk show, one, one of the good ones, though. And oh, was it Anderson? No, no, no. This uh, was back in 94. This was back okay. when uh, you, you had the – it wouldn't have been Ricky Lake because that was more drama. 
<laughs> uh, right. But yeah. Well, 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 it was one of the good shows. I don't remember which one it was, but these women were going into their experiences, and, you know, this woman said, well, the first sign was this triangular pattern of puncture marks on my lower abdomen. And I looked at her, and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, Seriously? Yeah. Hey, uh, and, you know, this was before anything. This was before my UFO experiences. I had no clue. No, no, no clue whatsoever about UFOs, about abduction. I had my spirit encounters. I had my, I believe by this time, I had my wormhole, my time shift experience. I'll get into that later where actually me and a buddy walked through a time shift and actually saw Hitler. Um, mm. uh, we'll, we'll get into that one uh, later on. <laughs> but, but I looked at her and said, no way. There, there's no way in hell. Um, and, and then, of course, it went into the pattern of... Uh, uh, th- there was a, a pregnancy, and, you know, this woman I was with uh, actually did get pregnant. Um, we actually went to the Madigan Army Hospital, and even the they did an ultrasound, they did the whole nine yards, and were baffled because there was no fetus. They Ooh. knew she had been pregnant, but the pregnancy was missing, <laughs> and they were scratching their heads. And... So my first book I got, because we knew hands down this was an abduction, uh, she started describing dreams of being on a ship, uh, which follows the pattern of the the gray hybrid program. Um, yes. My first book was Dr. David Jacobs' Secret Life with Alien Abduction. And mm-hmm. I went into anger mode because, you know, when he, I wasn't the one being abducted, but I knew this person personally. Yes. And... Back then, there was nothing I could do but study and find out what's going on and why. And I was, I'm not, I wasn't skeptical. I was just, I guess, angry and wanted to, you know, I was like, I know we're not alone. We can't be alone. There's got to be other abductions out there. That's why I started researching, studying, uh, getting as much information from the woman I was with uh, that I could. And that that was, uh, I'm trying to think of how, to, how to say this all, but that, 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 was, that started the road to thinking outside the box, I guess. <laughs> right. Um, well, right, trying to figure out. What you're saying is that you believed what she was telling you. She'd been abducted, and this was the type of program that was going on with her, correct? Mm, yeah. And, and, you know, it wasn't so much as I'm just taking her word. I saw the signs, the physical marks. Uh, it, you know, and, and I think many people discredit uh, in this field the words of the experiencer, and, and that's the wrong way to take it until you can prove otherwise. Because there are psychiatric issues with some people. We we see it all the time. Uh, if there's nothing there whatsoever, and we, so real quick, we have an astral team, which uh, we actually, we're working a case right now in, in Indonesia. So what is astral? Astral, for the easiest way to explain, the CIA had the remote viewing program back in the 60s and 70s. And remote viewing uh, is simply put, is leaving your conscious mind and traveling to another dimension. They used it, and it's documented, spying in Vietnam. They used it spying on the Russians in the Cold War. Uh, what we do is a little bit different, well, a lot different. You can't really be hurt doing remote viewing. You can when you're astral. Astral is actually yes. leaving your body consciously. Yes, traveling. exactly. Now, there's different ways of uh, our team does it. They have to get a, an address. They, they'll go on Google Maps so with the address. They'll get, get a picture of the house, and they can be there within seconds. The other way is to mm-hmm. look at a picture of the client. They look at a picture of the client. They talk to them on the phone. They get a lock on their energy. They'll be there in seconds. Yes. And it, it's interesting because with uh, when they're astral, when they're walking in this client's house, um, We've had cases where the the client will say, "That's kind of weird. My dog is following something down the hallway." Oh, don't yeah. worry about it. That's just the team. They're walking down your hall right now. Because I'll be talking to the team and the client at the same time. Uh huh. Yes. Yes. 
uh, Astro. Go right ahead. I'm sorry. So there, 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 there will be situations where Tony will be talking to me on, on chat. And, and t- could you please ask the client to get her family and go in this room? And so I'll tell the client, you know, can you please get your family and go in this room so you're out of the way? And, it, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, it, it gets interesting sometimes. But oh, we handle yeah. about five cases. We, get, we handle about five cases a day, roughly. And we have stopped abductions with this method. Yeah, that's one of the interesting things that uh, I would uh, love to talk to you about because uh, uh, Maria and I always continually uh, work with abductees. And one of the things that I can tell you about abductees is that you're normally with them. Uh, if you're a real serious in this stuff, they you never leave your abductees. And most of them, I've got one uh, we both have. Uh, a friend that has become a friend that is an abductee currently right now is going through some very bad times. And mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. I would uh, love to talk to you more detail about uh, helping him. Uh, the situation is, uh, how are you able to stop this abduction? That's what I'm really interested in, in seeing. Okay, so generally speaking... Uh, so what I do is triage. Now, triage is French for sorting. Uh, it's used in the medical field. You categorize uh, patients by uh, the, their medical category, uh, whether they're life-threatening, whether they just need a Band-Aid, that kind of thing. So what I do with triage is categorize uh, our clients. Uh, if they're an abductee, they're about Tier 2. Uh, tier 1 would be children and pregnant women. Uh, Tier two would be abduction and physical injury of uh, anyone, whether it's a haunting or or abduction. Abduction is usually tier mm-hmm. two anyway. Um, that way, if we get multiple cases at one time, I can prioritize. Uh, so when the astral team goes in, first thing they look for is, and they, and they can pick them up by energy, is they look for the implants. Now, once they find the implant, the easiest way to explain is they'll disable it with a burst of energy. Mm-hmm. Now, that brings on an interesting uh, situation because once the implant is disabled, whatever race implanted them will get confused and come to check it out. Yes. And that's where the astral combat side comes in. And depending on which race, we found the grays oftentimes will step back cut their losses or try to retreat and maybe come back after our team is gone and try to, uh, you know, uh, fix the implant. <clears throat> the reptilians, mm-hmm. however, are combative. They love combat. <laughs> yes. So that's where we go into ask for combat. Uh, and I've been asked, well, does that mean you get a reptilian body? No, because you're fighting them astrally. Mm-hmm. So there is no body. I'd love to have a reptilian body. Oh, my God. Oh, who wouldn't? <laughs> <laughs> but as far as evidence, because everybody wants evidence, no, there is no real evidence. Um, when I go by, the best evidence I get is the peace of mind of the client. When that client can tell me, I haven't been abducted since you guys have been in, we're successful. Yes, exactly. I've got a client, uh, our first client, as a matter of fact, was being abducted three times a week for about three years. Mm. And we went in and stopped his abduction. He hasn't been abducted since, and it's been over a year. Hmm. Very so, interesting. You know, some abductions are harder because there is an implant as well uh, that is in the brain, and it causes holograms. Yes. Uh, not sure if you've it, heard of that implant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and same, um, uh, uh, yes, we have. The same thing with the one in the sinus. It's also a very hard one to get uh, 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 get to. Uh, but uh, those, those ones, I believe, we have been able to disable. Have you? Okay. The, yeah. Uh, the, the unusual uh, thing about it is, and you mentioned to it earlier, since you are doing this astrally you know, and you talked about combat, and I'm uh, mm-hmm. very familiar with the astral side of it. And you mentioned earlier that, yes, when you do it astrally, uh, the remote uh, viewing type thing, you can definitely be injured. Has any of your team been injured throughout this by, by, by practicing this? Because whatever happens to you yes, in the they, astral plane, 
can actually happen to you real when you come back. Yes, and we have had a couple injuries. Uh, and then we also have a Reiki master who uh, is, is always there to assist in healing when it comes to injuries. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm thinking we need right, to get out of the Bible Belt fair. Yeah, <laughs> you and I are both thinking the same thing. Yep. Yeah. 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 And the thing about the thing about the Bible Belt is, yeah, everything's a demon. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> I, I get into that discussion all the time too. Yeah, we fight that uh, on a continual basis uh, here, and uh, demonic entities are a few and uh, far between. Uh, and there's a lot of it, uh, different types of stuff, and I know that you deal with all kinds of stuff, and I um, I know that uh, uh, you're also um, well, I'll save that for later. Um, but as you said, you deal with uh, imps, uh, all different kinds of uh, entities, uh, and uh, uh, because they're all here, they're. I mean, we deal with them all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just not spirits. There are there are other entities that are not worldly that uh, are definitely. Well, the, the the thing is, you know, when you die, if you were, and I don't know, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if you can cuss on your show, but if you were a jerk in life, then you're going to be a jerk as a spirit. That's not the oh, yeah. oh yeah, we, if we, you we haven't passed. Thing. If you haven't passed over, uh, when you pass over, it, you have the choice of coming back, and some do. Uh, that, that's really common with family members when they want to check on, uh, you, you know, their loved ones. That's when. Oh my God! I walked into my house and I smelled lilac, and that was Grandma uh, Nellie's favorite perfume. Or mm-hmm. I walked into my house and I smelled a cigar, and you know, Grandpa used to smoke a cigar. And yep. y- you know, these are oftentimes the spirit of the loved ones coming back to check on them or deliver a message. Yes, um, exactly. But spirits can cause just as so much harm and damage as a demon can. Oh, uh, I, I I think my favorite true. is. I woke up with three scratches, and that's supposed to be demonic. No, actually, three scratches doesn't necessarily mean demonic. <laughs> a yeah, spirit can do the yeah. same thing. A spirit can push you down the stairs. does not mean it's a demon. You can tell a demon by the energy. Yes. And they, Most, yeah, yeah, and a lot, Most, of people get, a lot of people do get that confused. I mean, they think that they just because they've watched a, a ghost hunting show and the three scratches <laughs> has come up, oh, my goodness. Yes, the Trinity. People, oh my God! <laughs> yeah, people yeah, don't that's... understand that the energy from something that is nothing but pure evil can drive you insane. Yes. Well, the thing is, you know, paranormal TV did two things. It, it, it opened up the paranormal door for the public to that. Yes, the paranormal is real. But then, you know, the way they put it, everything is about ratings, and it's all entertainment. To me, paranormal is not what? entertaining. It's not entertaining to be pushed downstairs. It's not entertaining to be abducted. Um, You're I don't 100% care about right. pictures. I don't care about EVPs. That's not what we're here for. We're here for the emergency response side of it. And we don't need to see everyone's cool EVPs. And I went to Waverly Hills. Well, good for you. That's yeah. not our thing. We don't go to hot spots. We will go to a hot spot for training. If we have new team members that need to see the equipment, see how things work, see how the investigations run, we'll go to a hot spot because we know they're going to probably see some. That's the only time. We do that about right. once a year. Unless we actually have a client, because, I mean, we did do an investigation Sunday, and a scientist was here. <laughs> and uh, we had a client that actually wanted us to go into this historic site that, to my knowledge, no other team had been to. So there was no documentation that, yes, it's haunted. Um, mm-hmm. And she wanted us to tell her, yes, it's haunted or no, it's not, because she does a travel blog for the community. So right. I agreed for, one, okay, well, answer your question. And, two, it's a good training opportunity to bring the two new members in to see how a full investigation is run. Mm-hmm. And it was fun. And, yes, it's you know, we had about five different pieces of equipment. The batteries were completely drained. Mm-hmm. And... They were brand new batteries, and they, everything was fully charged. My camera did just fine. So um, I think it's the energy of the person. 
along with the particular equipment. Uh, I mean, we had, we had a Geiger counter. We had uh, the Geiger counter was fine, but I mean, we you know three different cameras drained, our, our mm-hmm. combo equipment drained. <laughs> it was interesting though. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you know, mean... what, 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 one of our team members uh, got touched. Nobody was around him. Uh, we also have a, you know, I, I listened to your last week's show a little bit, um, and we actually have a drone operator that is FAA certified. And Excellent. he's got, yes. he, he's got top of the line. Cause, I mean, we're in the mountains, so if we do a mountain case, I want eyes in the sky. Uh, one for the safety of the team. Two, uh, you might pick up an anomaly. Uh, right. He's got exactly. clear. He's got the whole. He can go out five to six miles. The, the thirty minute batteries. He, he's got the. He, you know, he, he he does that for a job. He takes pictures of uh, houses for real estate and his money maker. Mm-hmm. But uh, he's part of the team because he's got his own. He's also military, ex-military, and he's a uh, had his own. He was a skeptic until about two years ago, and he had his own experiences and uh, <laughs> joined the team. So. Yeah, that's excellent. That's excellent. We have a we have a, a drone operator that's going that way. It's uh, was the founder, and he has the uh, FAA commercial class, and is uh, mm-hmm. doing more. We're really looking forward to <clears throat> using that piece of equipment because it brings us into a totally different aspect. As you said, when you're above the air, and especially when you're dealing with strange creatures or anything else, that's always an asset. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> You know, to know where and what you're up against. Um, you exactly. know, we, we have, uh, I volunteer for a, uh, a haunted place, and uh, Maria does also. We do novice hunts down there all the time. But we're basically here to help uh, people get over their, uh, their problems. We love to go in and work with it. We use EVPs and photographs to be able to determine what we're dealing with. That's the biggest part about it. It's not the, oh, listen to that. It isn't that cool. All right. It it just helps you get an idea of what entity or what you're, what, what you're doing, and then it helps you be able to formulate your plan to be able to get rid of it. Correct, Maria? Yes, definitely. Um, because if you don't know what you're dealing with, then you can't exactly go in there and help somebody. Well, that's where you need an astral team. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah well. Cause you, you know, the, the astral team, I guess you could say would be our replacement for needing a camera and need, I could, I do have a full spectrum camera. Uh, we, we do have, you know, very limited tech. We don't need it because the astral team goes in. They're the camera. They're the ones that can tell you, right. uh, yes. And we also have a medium. And you know, we you get into the uh, the argument and the fight with many other teams. Well, mediums aren't real. Well, well you, the mediums are actually. I I agree. Ninety percent mediums can be fake, but until you validate them, then they become real. Yes. That's and we have validated our, our medium. Yeah, we have. You know, we have a lot of people that come out and they just love to say, "Well, I'm." I'm psychic and I'm a medium and I do this. And then you, then you actually vet them. And when you have, and we're fortunate enough to have like three very well uh, vetted uh, mediums that can uh, assist us and so forth. And uh, uh, it is a pleasure to be able to, uh, uh, to work with them. Now there is such an asset and uh, they, they will help you out tremendously. Uh, yeah, but no. then again, yeah, go ahead. To, to to give a perfect example, and I always use this case because it was a perfectly coordinated, I mean, when it comes to, val- you know, validating tech with the astral, with a medium, we went to a location, the, the client was having a high activity, a, a very negative home, and, you know, the first thing we did, media, medium, uh, and she goes in blind. And I, I told, I asked her, you know, walk through the house. And she came out. She said, well, there was, I couldn't pick it up, but there was something there, and it ran away. I'm like, okay. We went through with EMF. We had high readings all around the house. 
but we have the highest readings, about 150, which you're, with that particular EMF, uh, the standard baseline is about 50 in most homes. And this was about 150, and it was pinpointing at the attic. So we came out, and I asked him, you know, what's in your attic? Do you have anything electronic? Is there wiring? Uh, what, what do you have? Because uh, as most know, your cell phone can set off EMF. Old wiring can set off EMF. Anything with high electricity can set off the EMF meter. Sure. And he said, I've never been in the attic, and I, I have no idea. It should be empty. I go, okay. So I called uh, the astral team, and I said, go through the house, but I want you to focus on the attic. Mm -hmm. And she called back 15 minutes later and said, so there is uh, an entity I can't even begin to describe. It's like an ape, and it has fangs. And we've never uh, seen this kind of entity before. What What do you want us to do? And I said, remove it. And I gave her about 20 minutes. We went, you know, sent, sent our medium through. She said, it's all clear. I pick up nothing. We went through the EMF. Everything back to 50. Fantastic. Everything. We couldn't even shake the EMF meter to get it to rise. But, yeah, the whole house was clear. And the client went in and said, oh, my God, it's like I'm walking into a whole new home. Mm-hmm. And he's never had problems since. But there you have validation from your medium, the astral, and it's all shown on your technology. Yes, exactly. You're, you're, you're double val- validating the whole the, the whole situation. Mm-hmm. Hey, Eric, and, uh, I know, did that... want to ask you one thing. <clears throat> Have you ever ran into a situation where your medium was totally, completely off of what was really going on? Um, I'm thinking with her, no. Okay. I just I just wondered because I know sometimes um, things tend to like to hide or disguise themselves from people who can see them. Right, right. And I did know, cause, and and it does fool some people. Mm-hmm. But to be honest with you, she, so she's on the astral team now as well. Uh, she's a newbie on the astral side. Um, mm-hmm. She's still in, in, in uh, training phase. But goes on cases. Um, so when we use her as a medium, it's boots on ground here locally. We don't get many boots on ground cases. One, I think because we're hard to find. We'll put up flyers. We'll put out the promos, but we don't get a whole lot of exposure. And I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm okay with that because clients will find you when you're supposed to. I agree. They with find that us through other means. Yeah, you know, that's one of the yeah, that's and, one of the things about abductees. Uh, I always say an abductee finds finds us uh, at the where it's time, and it's and I still haven't I still have a hard time understanding it. But they said, well, we were I was I was supposed to contact you, and mm-hmm. uh, I I kind of go, okay, go ahead and sit down and tell me the story. I know what's going to happen. So, <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, and, yeah, and I know you're going to agree with this, but. The, the first comment I hear out of any client's mouth when I first talk first talk to them is, "You're going to think I'm crazy." Oh, <laughs> always. <As> a, <laughs> uh, yeah, always. As, every time. And, and my response is probably not, because I've yeah, uh, yeah uh, we've been doing this as a team for about twelve years, and yeah, I've been in the field for over twenty. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and honestly, in my opinion, any team that's uh, under five years old to me is a new team. Yes. Because the first thing you ask them is, you're a weekend warrior. How many cases has your team actually done? Mm-hmm. And, you know, so any team under five years, and you've got too many teams out there, and that's the bane of Paranormal TV, is you got Steve and Bob, and they, oh, that looks cool. Let's, let's, let's start it. Well, let's do that. Yeah. 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 And Boy, I feel our the education. <laughs> All their education is based off paranormal TV, mm-hmm. and, you know, and so they go out and, well, they have that kind of equipment. Let's buy that. And they go out, and it's real easy to go on Mr. Print and get some cheap business cards and a cool right. T-shirt. Yeah. And we'll name ourselves we'll name ourselves Rip. That's a cool name, mm-hmm. or you know, some other, yeah. you know, uh, whatever, whatever, whatever be the. Yeah, that sounds cool. 
know, and, so, you know, it's and gonna then, be cool. And it's. I, I know that Maria and I deal with uh, that a lot in this area. And what will happen is, is that we have the investigators that, well, let's call them the weekend warriors, that go out and do mm-hmm. paranormal investigations. And then they call me and they go, oh, my gosh, I think I've got an attachment. Oh, my gosh, I, uh, well, I did something. <laughs> or then you have a client that they've gone into their house and it has just erupted into uh, total chaos. And then they're calling you to say, we need help. Please help us. You know, and uh, uh, it's just stuff that it, 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 we we do it gladly because it helps them understand more. Them, uh, there are a lot of people out here that really do want to learn and do want to be able to uh, take this to the next step. And there are, uh, are others that uh, see it one time, see something bad, and never want to go back ever again. Well, and then you got the ones that it's all ego because they've been doing it for a year, and uh, you know they know everything that Zach Baggins knows. And oh, really? Yeah. Oh, good God, Jesus! We run into that all the time. Yeah. Well, I, I got to tell you. Like, uh, you, you, you must uh, you must go to the same church that Maria and I do, and you're sitting in the same pew because boy, everything's coming out of your mouth. It's just what we say uh, all the time. So. Uh huh. And, and you know, so what they do with client, and, and I know it's safe to say about eight out of ten cases. Um, and it's re, so we have a pre-investigative questionnaire. It's easy to, easy for clients to find. It's on Google Forms, and that way the mm-hmm. team can access access it at the same time. But it's right there on the on a questionnaire. Does any other team come in? And eight out of ten cases, yes, they've contacted the local team. That team went in. Um, and when these teams go in, they, they do two things. One, they validate the fear to the client that, yes, there is something there, but now we don't know what to do. And they did exactly what they do on TV, and they provoke. You yes. will show yourself, or we're going to banish you. Really, do you know what the word banish means? Probably not. And do, seriously? It, so, you know, now they provoke, and they've made the, the situation worse. They leave sometimes out of fear because, oh, my God, we actually encountered something. It wasn't a rock that the director threw. Yeah. <laughs> and right, exactly. You, you, you know, they they go running out the door, and now, you know, the, the energy level of the client is even higher because now they're terrified even more than they were. Um, and they've ticked off the spirit or entity or whatever the case is. Yes. And that's usually when they find us. Mm-hmm. And they're usually terrified. And that's when the fun begins. Right, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them are actually in a motel because they don't want to go back home. Yes, they're they're they are totally afraid, and they're and they're so in, in because they love their home. It's they don't have mm-hmm. a place to go to. They've invested all their money into it. They want to have that home that is, becomes a. Uh, I think to them they have plans, and then all of a sudden, here you go. It's all wiped out. It's it's taken away from them, and they're searching for, and they need somebody to really help them. And I'm so glad that uh, you guys are uh, are, are out there, and that uh, uh, you are doing that. Uh, getting back to the uh, uh, abductees uh, for a second, and you're talking about some of these aliens. Uh, you guys, uh, and I know you got the scientists and these other people that are uh, that deal with uh, alien entities and so forth. Uh, so, what are you getting as the agenda of certain of these species? So, there are sixteen races that are documented that are abducting. Um, I can't remember all the specific names. I know we were talking earlier about reptilians, and you got the Teclex and the Sazazian. Uh, right. Now, what there is, uh, our alien race specialists, and I use the word specialist because I don't believe in experts. Everyone thinks they're an expert, but I'm sorry, the difference is experts have no room for educating themselves. They think they know everything. So yeah. we prefer to use the word specialist. I'm the uh, UFO abduction specialist. Our Keith Andrews is our alien race specialist. He's been dealing with alien races for, oh, God, uh, 
10, 20 years, or actually most of his life, but specifically 10 to 20 years. Uh, and he, did, he he communicates with about 50 or more races constantly. Um, so you've got the scientific races. These are the ones that come down and do medical experiments. Uh, and do they mean harm? No. They don't. But it's just like humans that go out and find elk herds and they put a tracking device. Uh, you know, do they really care what they kill? Do they really care what they damage? But you've got many cases of abduction where people have been healed. They've been healed of cancer. Yes. Look at Travis Walton. Travis Walton, fire in the sky, everyone thought they killed him or he was abducted. Uh, mm-hmm. In his new bio that came out two years ago, actually, they accidentally killed him with the tractor beam. He was taken back up. They resuscitated him. They essentially fixed him, and they returned him. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, you know, most of them, they're interested more in the planet than they are the humans. The humans just kind of here. Yeah. Um, then you've got the, okay, so you've got the gray hybrid program. That's a program all by itself because that's specifically what the grays. You'll oftentimes right. find the mantids working with them. you also find the reptilians working with them. Um, then you've got the social experiments. These are the abductees that are taken up, and they are forced to watch uh, apocalyptic uh, violence, uh, sometimes peaceful, but things of that nature, and the aliens are simply studying questions and the emotions of the humans. Uh, that's exactly right, so, and we know that well. Yeah. And I mean, even even that's documented in in Dr. Jacob's books. But I don't mm-hmm. think he knew exactly at that point in time what that meant. Um, and then there are races that we don't know why they're abducting. There's no real rhyme or reason for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, you got the one that people don't want to hear about, and that's the one that well, we're actually dinner. And these are cases where the abduction or the abductee doesn't return. Right. Um, exactly. Missing people. I mean, one one. Anything else? Yes. Yeah, that's a. I, that's a whole other show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and we we've talked missing people four one one on S four, and I, my 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 belief with that is some of them are missing hikers. I think the government's taken some of them. I think some of them are abductions. Uh, I think some of them are walking into wormholes or uh, ports yes, for lack of better words. Yes, exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think there's yes. a, con- a whole conglomeration of a bunch of stuff that's going on. It's not just one thing. I actually well, agree Eric, with you. Eric, I, I want to ask you, Eric, I want to ask you one thing. Um, with your team, the, the astral team that goes in, is there – has there ever been a time where you've encountered something that wasn't an alien abduction or anything like that going on, but it was actually the military and their implants? That one, no. We haven't encountered that yet. Okay. I say yet. We learn yes. something new okay. every time we every, – every case we do, we learn something new. Because, I mean, we've dealt well, with – usually... you know, We've dealt with demons. We've dealt with uh, you know, male- malevolent entities that we don't know what they or- the origin is. We've broken curses. Um, but we haven't done everything. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Well, and, 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 you know? and the, the, rumor, the rumor is is that there is actually um, our military or our wonderful black budget government has a program mm-hmm. that you might think that it's, you are being abducted by grace, but this is actually our military, our government, whatever you want to classify that as, doing mm-hmm. their own experiments and putting their own implants into people, but they are actually making you think that you are being abducted by this horrible gray alien race. <laughs> Yeah. No, what would, I think that's where I think the, I think that's where my labs come in 
to be honest with you. Yes, that's exactly what it is. Exactly. You're hundred percent right, my lab. And we you know, I, I'm I'm lost when it comes to my labs. Uh, that, that's one area I don't look at. Um, oh, oh well we have a gentleman for you to talk with. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. We, you know, uh, so we have our Paracon, and we actually had a guy named Derek Tyler come on, uh, come and lecture, and he's got extensive my lab experience. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm a little bit torn on that. I mean, I know there's a secret government. Don't get me wrong. I know there's probably sides of our military that are involved. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Delta Force wasn't involved. Um, mm-hmm. And you're not supposed to talk about Delta Force, but yeah, they're there. Uh, I was yeah. selected for them. I didn't pass their test, so uh, I, I know for a fact they're there. I've been to the briefings, um, but I do think there is certain races that are actually working with the government on my labs. I don't think it's all U.S. government. Look at the Dulce Wars. Look at Philip Schneider. Uh, oh yeah, know, exactly. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So without a doubt, our government's working with them. Um, yeah. And so why isn't there disclosure? Let's talk about that for a second. I'm not going to hit on that whole lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but if you look at disclosure and you look at everything that's going to be lost if they do disclose, uh, I think that's one side you got to look at. Uh, if you go by the theories that uh, Eisenhower made a contract with the Greys, um, you know, now you've got one side of humanity going, well, if we made a contract with the Greys, how come we don't have better technology and how come we don't have, uh, you know, alien technology powering our vehicles instead of oil and gas? Well, there's right. billions lost in that industry. Then you yeah. got the abductees going, so you made a contract with aliens to abduct me. How dare you? And you knew about mm-hmm. it. Then you got yeah. the religion aspect. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, yeah. So, is there going to be disclosure? I, I, I it might happen, um, but very carefully. You know, it's funny. The only disclosure that we're, the only disclosure we're ever going to get is with us. Um, there is never going to be a big CNN broadcast saying, no. "Oh, by the way, guess what just happened." I, like, you know, and I've said it before, I think the closest we got to disclosure when Trump came out and said, we need a Space Force. <laughs> yes. Yeah, which yeah. we already have. So, right. <laughs> there you yeah. go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, so then it, you, you know, ask, uh, why do we need a Space Force? Are there aliens? Right. <gasps> yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. Seriously? You know, oh, and, no. And, yeah. and, and so then I, I've addressed this before. Where does Forest Moon go when disclosure happens? Well, very simple. Our job is going to get even busier because now we're going to have a whole lot of abductees coming to us. And the question is not going to be, is that a UFO? But which UFO is it and which race is flying it and why? Why, exactly. Yep, exactly. There's, that, there's, that, always, going to be, there's always going to be room for a group like yourselves or like uh, Maria's and uh, our group because we're here to help. You know, we've got to deal with the other problems that all come with us after the disclosure. And, and the amazing thing about it is when we look at disclosure, and, and I'll just talk about it a quick second, uh, Maria, myself, and some of the others that we uh, uh, deal with, we always look at, and I'm a firm believer that a uh, disclosure is going to come from the abductees themselves. As you bring more and more abductees together, each of them we find has a certain puzzle or, cl- or clue to this thing. And uh, if you're going to actually have a truer disclosure, it's going to come by bringing these all together. And that's one of the things that I do not believe that the government wants to wants to have done. And, you know, when we talk about my labs, a combination with uh, aliens and uh, uh, the military uh, doing this, uh, the first thing that comes to our mind is also that uh, do you come and do the fact that uh, – a lot of the abductees are monitored by uh, government vehicles. I've heard that, um, and they usually have government plates, so they usually don't hide themselves too much. And I believe uh, that's no, some of the men in black. You would. I, I believe that's some of the men in black cases you'll hear about. They are actually government. Uh, you know, and, and we have the. So you had Roswell in '47, and we had a more the Maury Island incident here in Washington. 
uh, shortly before Roswell, and mm-hmm. that was one of the first Men in Black cases here in Washington. And yes. uh, so I, I do think some of them are alien races. I think it's the government, uh, too, trying to find out what the contactee or the abductee knows. Right, and I, well, that's exactly what we agree to, or or else they're trying to find out why they were abducted by this certain race that may be good, better, or whatever. I think there's several wars going on out there. I think they want to know why, and uh, most of the abductees that are uh, tortured, we find out that they go through this pain and agony, whether it be emotional uh, and mm-hmm. uh, or actually the physical, uh, scientific uh uh, type of abductions uh, actually uh, are uh, they want to know why and why they do not eat the or drink the Kool Aid that everybody else does? Why can't they control them like everybody else? Exactly. Now, what you will find, uh, and, and so I, I got some people going, "Well, why? Why don't I get abducted?" Well, or they're they're afraid they're going to get abducted. And I always tell them the chance of you being abducted if you haven't been already is probably pretty slim because usually you'll find with abductees that their mother or father was taken, their grandmother and grandfather were taken, or if they didn't know they were taken, they had strange experiences they couldn't explain. And you will find most of the, theory. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You, you will find most of the abductees, it's bloodline and it's DNA that they're tracking. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, think, I'm the first to say that I hope I'm never abducted. I don't want to deal right. with all of that drama. <laughs> I got enough I, I think, going on right now. I, I, think that's, yeah. I, I think that's mostly with the scientific races. Uh, the gray hybrid program was completely different. Um, mm-hmm. The gray hybrid program was uh, was very random. Mm-hmm. But that was a different that was a different mission perspective from the. Uh, alien race in, in, in question. Um, so, I, yeah, I think it was the agenda, but most of the abductions you will find that were the scientific, that had the scoop marks, that had the nosebleeds, that had the uh, the general scientific appearing phenomena, yes. uh, you will find were generational. And that's because they wanted to track DNA, see why certain things were happening. Um, if they had cancer, all of a sudden you would find the cancer was gone. Right. Uh, so, so it was beneficial, but it was still uh, tra- traumatic and terrifying. Yeah. You know what's amazing is that we find out in some of the abduction cases, and normally what happens is they have an experience. They may not even remotely even know they've been abducted, and all of a sudden somewhere in their 30s, 40s, they have an experience, and then, it, it, then they start remembering it. And then as they start going back and they start talking to grandma or they start talking to somebody else, there's always that person that says, oh, grandma used to always talk about aliens and all of this. And they, you would have yeah. to start putting yeah. together all these situations that went on to your past. And why all of a sudden mm-hmm. did you have an interest in the paranormal? And why do you have all this? Because you don't even know it, but it was inside and it's all festering up. And it's coming back the other way because it, it runs back to you. So. It, it is quite and, the uh, ordeal. And, and what's interesting is, you know, the some abductees they'll go out, get, they'll get a new tattoo, or they'll get an earring or a nose piercing, and all of a sudden they're taken that night because it's intriguing. The aliens right. are going, "Well, why do you have red and blue ink on your arm? Uh, yeah. What's that nose really? Why do you have metal through your nose? <laughs> you, yeah. you know, different different things." That an abductee does intrigue the aliens, and they'll come back and check it out. Okay, so what I'm going to do is every alien script that I've seen, I'm going to have tattooed on my back, and let's see if they come and decipher it for me. (laughs) There you go. There you go. All right. So, so what? So what we're working on is one of the new projects we're working on. We're trying to get first responders, law enforcement, uh, emergency management fields uh, educated. So we've a- actually created a press kit and we've created a uh, I've created a training program to teach law enforcement, uh, first responders, uh, you know, the, the the front lines of emergencies and what they can look for when they walk into a, a you know, a 
a, a site. If it's a domestic violence, for example, and they see shadows, you might want to call us in. Yeah, uh, if yeah. you're a firefighter, you walk into a fire and you get a, a cold spot all of a sudden in what should be a very hot area, that's an identifier you might want to call us in. Uh, yeah, things of that nature. If you're a paramedic, you walk in, you see uh, scoop marks or, you know, something that you just can't explain. Because if you, if you Google first responders and paranormal in the same sentence, you're going to find a lot of first responders with stories. Yes, exactly. A lot of them are, yes. And, uh, you know, it's, it's it's kind of amazing that also these uh, – and, and one of the interesting things about it is is that there are actually – Manuals that have been come out, like the the uh, far uh, uh, manuals and so forth, and there are sections on what to do with uh, UFOs. Yeah, I, I read that, but you know how uh-huh. much that book is. <laughs> yeah, That's a lot I wanted to get a cop- for that book. <laughs> I wanted to get a copy of that book, and it's two to three hundred bucks. On the low well, end. Uh, well, I'll send you. <laughs> I've got a copy. <laughs> oh. I'll be more than happy. To but yeah, I was, I, I, I was surprised. I mean, you know, even if I want to get the new OSHA standards, they're like five to six hundred bucks, and right. it's like seriously, these are federal regulations. They should be free. Why yes. do you have to pay for uh, a copy of the federal regulations? That's just. Yeah. Yeah, that's more money the government wants to make. Mm-hmm. Let me ask you a question as far as the uh, your your global networking. Uh, are you actually mm-hmm. recruiting other teams to do global networking? We to do work with you. We, we do. They, oh. they have to they have to fit a certain criteria. They have to be uh, you know uh, if you're in it for science and you don't have a scientist, then uh, I'm gonna laugh and say hey, no. Uh, yeah. Because too many teams out there, oh, I'm I'm investigating for science. Well, are you using scientific theory? What's that? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, that's right. I took science was in high school. Um, you know, and we're just fortunate now. We do have two scientists and a psychiatrist and a lawyer. Uh, you, you know, uh, so Markham is our. He he's actually uh, works in a medical lab uh, as a career, and uh-huh. uh, he, he's our biology slash medical scientist. Uh, he wants to take physics, and that'd be great. And then we have uh, Karen. She's uh, actually our atmospheric and meteorological uh, scientist, and she actually worked for NASA and uh, Boeing and, and I believe FEMA at one point. But uh, hmm. So we have both sides of the, of the scientific field covered, and then we have a psychiatrist. So what we do, once we clear, uh, clear our, our client's case, then we have an aftercare team that comes in. They are the education. How do you protect your home? How do you cleanse your home? Uh, do we need a psychiatrist to come in and uh, assess you for crisis management? Uh, things of that right. nature. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I I am just totally amazed, and I'm so glad that, I mean, like I said, uh, when uh, uh, we had the opportunity to talk and I was able to look at some of the stuff, I was just, so impressed because you are doing exactly what uh, we feel that ought to be done, and that's the way that uh, the paranormal and these teams out there that are seriously about helping other individuals and want to get into the strange creatures, the uh, mm-hmm. abductees, the UFOs, and everything else. You are a model, and we uh, we do appreciate everything that you have set forth in it. But that. you know what discourages me is that 90% of the, the teams out there that claim to be paranormal investigators don't believe in UFOs and aliens. Well, we're going Well, first. you know, that's... Well, yeah. It's, 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 it's like why? Lord, that all the time. It drives me oh, nuts. Yeah, you can't yeah. believe into one and not believe in the other. Yeah, no. and, 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 and you know, it's you, really you, odd. You, yeah, go, go, you go, look go. at the National <laughs> Paranormal. You look at the National Paranormal Society, which it's a uh, a network of all paranormal teams that want to be listed. They they don't have any criteria, uh, but there's 3,600. Uh, last time I looked, which is a few months ago, that are actually listed in the United States alone. Now I know it's probably a, a that's a, a number that's doubled because, well, a lot of them aren't listed on the NPS. Um, 
but you look at them and only maybe 50 of them even remotely are interested in UFOs. And I find that disturbing because to me, paranormal is anything outside the ordinary. Uh, and a paracon, which, you know, we've done a paracon for free for the last two years. We're actually charging $5 at the door this year because, well, frankly, it's expensive to run a paracon. <laughs> yes, exactly. And uh, five bucks at the door, most people could afford. Uh, but you look at other symposiums that are charging two to three hundred, if not more. Most people can't afford that. I would love to go yes. to a, a a symposium, but I can't afford that. I, I really can't. I don't have the time to fly to another state just to attend a symposium. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> My 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 hours are limited as it is, uh, just running cases and uh, doing schoolwork and taking care of the kids. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just part of what I do because I also run a community group, uh, you know, answering disaster response questions and terrorism-related questions and things of that nature. So, yeah, you my, know, my, you know, <laughs> and, and and I, Eric, I agree with you 100. percent And I've I've been to symposiums. I've been to these things. And the conferences, and what you have is you have speakers going up there. They speak, they talk about their things, and then everybody else. And then you look at the people in the back row, and those are the people that are here to try to find out what's going on. They're the shy ones. They're the ones that don't want to be there. So, mm-hmm. and uh, those are the people that you get outside, and they're in the smoking lounges. They're anywhere else around, and they want to talk, and they'll tell you the stories that they've gone through, and they're looking for help and assistance. And the people that are in some of these, most of these uh, things all have their uh, battle plans already lined up. They've got their presentations lined up, and that's all they're going to talk about. And they really, you know, when they get with an abductee, there is no concern. There's nothing else, and they're, like, going, I don't, I'm not interested in that, Uh but if you got a good story, maybe I'll write a book on it. You know, and no, unfortunately, you know that's 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 the sad part of the ego and some of these conferences. But I do know that there are people that go to these conferences, and we do work. Uh, that's one of the reasons why I enjoy it the most because you get to meet the people who really want and need the help, and we'll talk to you about it. And those are those are the cases that are and the people that are really the genuine people, and that's what we're all there to to do. Hopefully, mm-hmm. you know. So, so we uh, so, and uh, our paracon is a paracon. It's not a UFO con, a ghost con. Uh, we actually have our Keith Andrews. He's going to be talking about children in reduction and the consortium. Now, mm-hmm. the consortium. Uh, not many people know about the consortium, but the consortium is kind of like a galactic council, for lack of a better explanation, of over 100 different races, and they monitor the are Earth. You, are you talking about like the Council of Twelve? Oh, no, they go way beyond the Council of Twelve. All right, yeah. gotcha. Uh, I, I know which one you're talking about, but uh, and it started out as a council of well, it started out as a Council of Twelve. Now it's a Council of Nine because I believe three races dropped out of the Council of Twelve. Yes. Um, but the consortium is over a hundred different races. They monitor the Earth. They, they they care about humanity, but they're not they they're not here to influence it. The only time they'll influence it is if we are going to destroy ourselves, because that in essence destroys the planet. For example, mm-hmm. nuclear war. Um, and that was that was one of the big things that happened in '73 when all the sack bases were being uh, alarmed and they were dealing around all the nuclear uh, stuff. That was uh, that uh, that group that was involved in that. That's why they had such a great interest in it. We had so many cases in sack bases in '73 and '74. Well, I'm also yeah. interested to see what happens today since Trump announced his sanctions against. Uh, Oh, uh, shoot, that just totally left my mind. The sanctions he put against... Uh, Iran? Uh, uh, yes, thank you, for uh, their nuclear program that they're supposedly supposed to have. I'm wondering yeah. what kind of uh, reaction that's going to have. Well, uh, you know, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm not going to jump on the politics side. Uh, to be honest, Perfectly honest with you, we should have left Saddam Hussein alone. 
because we wouldn't have the terrorist threats we have today. Most of your terrorism today is uh, what we actually created um, Mm -hmm. by going into Iraq because they were excited when we got into Iraq um, for a minute until it turned into an occupation. And many of the children that uh, lost their families and whatnot in accidental or friendly fire strikes back in 04, 05, 05, 06 are grown up today and, and they're joining ISIS. Now, I also believe ISIS is partially CIA created or funded or assisted. How well it's yeah, I, Yes. Um, on the Homeland Security side of things, my focus is also uh, on U- U.S. soil. Uh, mm-hmm. We have just as many terrorists on U.S. soil as we have to worry about overseas. You should be worried more about uh, the neo-Nazis, the Aryan nations, uh, the Christian identity movement, uh, things of that nature. They're the ones that are blowing up abortion clinics. They're the ones that are, uh, uh, they're they're more of a threat to us here than international terrorism is. The, what you see going on with international terrorism on U.S. soil aren't affiliated with ISIS. They are sympathizers. Exactly. So that that's just my take on that. <laughs> I wanted some people to ask agree, you one thing. Some won't. <laughs> you were going um, going back to the abductions and the people that you helped. Do you mm-hmm. run into many cases where the parents, or like you have a family and the children, are experiencing these abductions, but not the parents? Oh, uh, no. Uh, we have a case where the father was abducted numerous times over many years, and then his child was. Well, it turned out his child was also a hybrid. Mm-hmm. And he knew that. She didn't know that. but He knew his wife it, but was, she did not? Right. She knew she was different. She was special, but she didn't. You know, he didn't explain whether she was a hybrid at the point. Um, but his wife was abducted and impregnated, and she gave a natural birth. Sometimes that happens. They don't take the fetus out on the ship. They allow a child a you know, natural birth, and I think that's more modern than it is uh, from back in the 90s. Back in the 90s, you saw. The, uh, the the fetus is on the ship. Yes, exactly. Now, taking, I think more... So I what think do more you think after, brought on that, type, that change? I think because they wanted hybrids down here to learn emotion. I couldn't agree more with you. I, I, I do agree with that. Emotion is one of the things that they are... Uh, I don't think that they're capable of emotion. They study emotion very, very heavily. It's one of the the biggest parts of, of the abduction, and there's so many different emotional sides to it that it becomes uh, a very interesting thing. And they, they throw things at you like the uh, there's the fear of loneliness. They like to, they like to get you. A, they like to make you feel alone. They like to they mm-hmm. do all these things to to do it, and uh, it's, it's very uh, concerning and. Uh, they are studying the emotional side because they don't have that emotion. And that's what they want them to get used to and uh, be able to, uh, uh, if you will, uh, I hate to say implant it or actually just kind of uh, breed that into them so that they're uh, more useful to them. The odd thing about mm-hmm. it is, let me ask you about it. We were talking about the paranormal and, and the uh, abduction scenario. And one of the things that we find quite a lot that can go along with paranormal activity, and people can actually call you and say, hey, I've got some spirit activity where they're seeing shadows or seeing some of these other things, uh, light orbs, uh, odd things with uh, lights going out, uh, uh, televisions turning off and on and everything else. And actually you can walk into it, and that high strangeness is also related to uh, abduction cases or UFOs. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, do you see a lot of the the high strangers? That that's quite common uh, with abduction. Yeah, uh, you know the 
and you'll find a lot of abductees too. Uh, they'll go through computers. They'll go through cell phones. They'll go through uh, electronics like water. Yes. Um, and these are the ones also where, and it's actually on our on our questionnaire. Uh, you walk by street lights, and the street lights go out as you walk by them. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's all related to energy, to be honest with you, as far as the high strangeness side goes. Now, with poltergeist, we actually, uh, one of the questions we ask is, are there any prepubescent children uh, in the home? Because you will find the energy of prepubescent children, uh, whether they know it or not, is actually the cause of a lot of poltergeist activity. Right, exactly. Yeah, we run into that a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you, uh, now, yeah. now, once you teach them how to ground, ground that energy, mm-hmm. uh, it, it can stop it. Yes. Yeah. And the other bad thing um, about it is, you know, and, and and that's part of what our aftercare team does is is educate them on on that. Uh, we're also big on uh, so for new members that join the team and for other teams that want to join the network. Uh, we require them to take three classes. Uh, the classes are free. Uh, we don't mm-hmm. charge for any of our training or anything like that. That would be stupid. But the, well, the first class is Paranormal 101, where we go into everything. Uh, the second class is mandatory as well, and then that's uh, actually Paranormal Protection. How to shield yourself. Uh, we use black tourmaline uh, physically for a uh, very protective stone. Yes. Um and you know, depending on which religion you follow, uh, which uh, you got to have complete faith in your real, particular religion. Uh, if you mm-hmm. don't, it, it's not going to work, and you're going to come home with an attachment. Um, yes. So you know, paranormal protection is actually uh, one of our mandatory classes, and the third one is UFOs and abduction, and that pretty mm-hmm. much summarizes it. We do cover Bigfoot and uh, cryptids in Paranormal 101. Uh, when you when you talk about Bigfoot, I have heard Bigfoot uh, the tree knocks. We have Bigfoot around us up here. Um, mm-hmm. Honestly, I think he's a supernatural being. I don't think he's Gigantius Pithecus uh, or you know a, a, a prehuman or an animal. Uh, I, I base that off one Native American lore, and two. There's been too many cases where people have game cams where they see a coyote go by, they see a deer go by, all of a sudden they hear a strange noise and the camera goes white and you can see an image, but you can't tell what it is. Right. Um, two, you can't find bodies. Three, yes. you'll find you'll find tracks and you'll go into an open field and these tracks disappear. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> where did you go? So, so There's no trees to climb. Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I do believe he can cloak. Um, I have heard of cases mm-hmm. where, much like the movie Predator, uh, with the digital cloaking that he that that alien did, uh, Bigfoot's been seen the same way. You could hear him, yeah, but you could see mm-hmm. a digital like a heat wave movement. Right, and I've um, actually heard of cases, and actually uh, known of the cases where they can almost. They have a, a mind control where they can be standing right next to you or in the open, and you won't see them. No. Yeah, you know, they have. Yeah, you know, they have this uh, odd ability to be able to do that. And uh, you know, it's funny. We had uh, last uh, week. Um, I guest hosted a show out in Oregon, uh, Paranormal Horizons. We had Stan Gordon on, and we were talking about that. And my first question was, "Do you believe he's interdimensional?" And uh, it's amazing how many uh, Bigfoot researchers that are truly uh, working with this uh, are all going towards the same thing that you're saying. And uh, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, it's a it's a phenomenon that uh, definitely needs to be taken care of. And, and if you're not looking at that, if you are a researcher that's doing this, then I think you're missing a large piece, lar- large piece of the puzzle. Well, and they're not going to find him unless he wants to be found. I honestly see Bigfoot as a guardian. Um, will you there, there's will been you several cases. You? Yeah, yes. <laughs> but there's been several cases <laughs> of him guarding people or actually being that way in, in certain things it's, uh, and in certain uh, cases. I, I've come across that myself here in Kentucky. Well, you know, and, and there's been cases where kids got lost from their, their camp and Bigfoot actually uh, – took these kids and took them back to their camp. Yes. Um, 
you, you know, and I'm not, you know, I, I, there's one local that I know he was out taking pictures. Uh, was he in the wrong place at the wrong time? Probably. Um, he, he, he said he was he had an eerie presence. He had an eerie feeling, and a, a rock landed about 20 feet from him. And he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, eh, whatever. Well, the next rock landed about 10 feet from him. And he said, you got to do better than that. Uh, well, the next rock landed at his feet. And he said, okay, I got you. I'm out of here. Uh, you know, he, and I've heard another case in a town uh, about, you no, know, 15 miles from us where I don't know what they did uh, to, to kick him off, but they had a tree that was actually launched. <laughs> it wasn't a falling tree. It was actually a tree that was thrown through their window. Yeah, um, uh, of their moving car. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, I, I think if you're dumping your litter, if you're uh, in the wrong place at the wrong time, maybe if you're near their kids, uh, you, you know, they get a little more protective and they get a little more threatened. Um, I've, I've, you know, I've heard of cases where hunters saw Bigfoot. They had no inclination mm-hmm. to raise their gun up. None. Yes. Yeah, you, you know they they were pretty much like a thought was put in their head that you don't want to do that, right? Um, so yeah, that even though they have all the equipment me. to shoot them and everything else, they don't even think about it. It's almost like it's going. Why didn't? And after they have that experience, they, why didn't I shoot that? And I'm going to be honest with you. I think even if they did get a shot off, they wouldn't hit them. Uh, probably. Uh, from what. If you know if you go that, off the I, I, I it, that. if you go off the interdimensional theory, I, I don't think you just you just shift dimensions and you wouldn't hit them. Right, right, exactly. And uh, he has that ability, and that's that's why we don't find bodies. That's why we don't find those things. In in, in my book. Right. Now, do I have Bigfoot around me? I have no doubt. Uh, there was a case just down the road where the <laughs> the guy was building a shed. And he laid his concrete out, and he went to lunch, and he came back, and there were Bigfoot tracks across his concrete. And well, that yeah. freaked him out, and he went home, got his thirty thirty, and uh, came back, and I don't think he's been back since. But mm-hmm. uh, you, you know, and uh, I was told. So we we do have a Bigfoot specialist on the team. He's been in the field for about thirty years. He's actually uh, worked with a lot of the the uh, more famous Bigfoot researchers, but uh, he he's. Along the lines of how we believe, he believes he's a supernatural. Uh, he, he'll listen to the scientific theories, and you know uh, that's your opinion. I disagree with it, but you know everyone's got an opinion. And uh, he actually told me that just about every sheriff deputy up in uh, our community has had a Bigfoot encounter. So yeah. you know, I Bigfoot is all over the North Cascades. Mm-hmm. And so, he's he's in the he's in the Appalachians and around where where we are also. Uh, I, I believe there are yeah. different types of of uh, of Bigfoots, just like there are different uh, uh, types of uh, aliens. And I think that uh, some of them are meat eaters, some of them are uh, foresters and bear More eaters aggressive. and so forth like that. Yes, and uh, some of them are extremely aggressive. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, it all depends on the type, the area that you're in, and, and uh, what's going on. Hey, let me ask you a question. Now, I, I saw it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of religion, we mentioned religious beliefs and everything else. And I, uh, uh, you guys are associated with a, um, a pagan church, correct? Do you are you, uh, you actually you feel pagan? So yeah, Forest Moon Paranormal is a branch off of Forest Moon Grove, which is a pagan church. We are mm-hmm. a legal pagan church in Washington State. We're a legal nonprofit, which, by the Constitution, makes us a church okay. um, under okay. uh, religious organizations. Mm-hmm. Uh, we work with all faiths. We're not, uh, you know, if, if we have a Catholic case, we will let them know we are pagan-based, but we do have Christians on the team, Catholics on the team. It really doesn't matter. Religion is religion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, exactly. Exactly. As long as you've got and, some. <laughs> exactly, uh, but you know, and one of the things we do teach is occult symbology, because mm-hmm. if you have a if you have a team that walks in and they see a pentacle, which is a pentagram with a circle around it, many people automatically say, "Oh, that's a satanic emblem," 
Uh, well, actually, it's not. A pinnacle is a five-point star with a circle around it, and it is a very protective symbol. Now, yes. if you invert that, it becomes a symbol of Baphomet. Uh, you, you know, it, it falls into the yeah. satanic realm. That is wrong. Now, yeah. with I, I was uh, of... <clears throat> you need to know what you're walking into because if you walk in and you actually see a conjuring symbol, you might want to know who was conjured and if it was done correctly and how. Um, and, and if something was conjured, it's probably going to still be there. <laughs> uh, if a yeah, portal was but... opened, we close mm-hmm. portals all the time. That's part of what the team does. Um, yeah. But if we it, walk it, in and physically, and I see a conjuring or uh, you know something more malevolent, I'm going to pull a team out and send astral in and let astral deal with it, and then we'll go back in and clean it up. Okay. Uh, that's an interesting when you're talking about portals and, and closing them and everything else. And I don't know if you want to give any of your secrets out or whatever, but, uh, what are you, uh, is it, are you doing that actually by closing those portals or what are you doing to close a portal? That's the easiest way to close them is, uh, through the astral team. Yeah. Astral team. Um, okay. So, yeah. Some people think, uh, you know, you got to, uh, actually conjure and you actually have to, uh, perform a full ceremony to close a portal. Uh, that's not how we do it. We do it astrally. Uh, much mm-hmm. easier from the astral. Okay. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. Hey, Maria. Uh, I'm thinking. <laughs> yes. Are you ready to take an astral trip? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll keep my ass planted to the ground. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, darn it. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, that is, you know, uh, and uh, astral has always been something that I've been uh, uh, very uh, intrigued with and interested in for uh, a long, uh, long, long period of time. And uh, uh, it's uh, very, very... Uh, interesting on uh how you can do it and uh uh we've had uh, i've personally had uh, uh experiences in the astral plane and and it's amazing i think also that some of the abductees i don't know if you find out or not do you find that they actually are able to use a different part of their mind that we don't believe that we are currently using and that helps them along in that astral uh, yes, and, uh, there are astral abductions, uh, which is something kind of some, somewhat kind of a new phenomena, um, and something we're actually looking at because uh, it is new, and, and and if we have to deal with it, we will. Uh, mm-hmm. It's basically where they're leaving the physical body in the bed and and taking them astrally. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure if you've uh, had to deal with that yet. Uh, I haven't dealt with it yet, but I'm uh, pretty well aware of it, and I've heard of it on several uh, occasions. And uh, and that is actually probably one of the most uh, uh, scariest type of uh, uh, abductions that I could personally think of. Uh, Because it also leaves the opportunity of of walk-ins or anything else that that, that can happen. Exactly. uh, So what we do is uh, we shield uh, shield the client to where they can't be taken astrally. Mm -hmm. And once you, you know, so everyone's got a vibration level. And if you're you're depressed, if you're... uh, negative in general, then you have a lower vibration. It's easier for you to be taken. Mm -hmm. Uh, So oftentimes we go in, we raise the vibration of the home. We raise the vibration of the client. It pushes the aliens away. And then you've got the argument, well, that means they're demons. No, actually it doesn't. Demons also, yes, are drawn to lower vibrations, but so are aliens. They're two different Things actually, aliens and demons hate each other. <laughs> it, oh, it's a well, mutual hatred. Really, <laughs> you know, that's that's very funny. We find that in some of the dealings that we have, also. But uh, they actually, they they know of each other. That's what's amazing. They they do, yeah. they do. <laughs> well, uh, Eric, it's been such a pleasure having you on tonight. And unfortunately, we're running out of time. We're going to have to have you back on and do another show. 
This has just been so intriguing, and uh, <laughs> I just can't uh, I can't thank you enough. And uh, I'll be uh, talking to you soon. Give give out a uh, web page or whatever how to get a hold of you. Uh, yes, folks can find Forest Moon Paranormal on Facebook, which is where our uh, that's our most active business, uh, I guess you could say. And uh, just look for Forest Moon Paranormal on Facebook. Join the group. Don't go to the page because I don't check the page much. Our website is at www.forestmoonparamal.spruz.com, S-P-R-U-Z.com. Excellent. And uh, we thank, thank you. you. We're about out of thank time. Thank you very much. Thank you. And, and by the way, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. And uh, we will see you next week, same time, same bad channel, 8 o'clock for Into the I Far. I think we'll have Charlie Raymond next week. That will be excellent. Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Can't wait. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. At Colorado State University Global Campus, online education isn't another thing we do. It's all we do. Get an interactive education that's built for working adults like you and that employers demand. Explore your options at csuglobal.edu. Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.